Hello, I decided to design a plugin system because it's fairly interesting. So I have a simple application here. This application loads images and saves them as a bitmap to a specified directory. So I'm going to go into my pictures, load up this PNG, and then you've got your plugins here. And um, this, one, this one loaded is a template plug plugin, so it doesn't have anything. But this one down here is actually implemented. So I can use this plugin here to do work on this image. And then I can save the image to my desktop or whatever. And um, it, that's not it. There it is. It's up there. It's funny how you can add files to your desktop and the de desktop doesn't automatically refresh. Okay, so how I did this plugin system is I'm using reflections and I'm loading assemblies at runtime and searching for specific um, plugin details. So let's go into the plugin manager here. Basically, this plugin manager is responsible for loading the plugins in a plugin array, and I have a plugin object down here to represent the actual plugins. So basically all these plugins go oops all these plugins go in a directory in the startup path of the program called plugins they're just dlls manage dlls dot net manage dlls to be specific and um so let's take a look at this plugin object so the plugin object has a tool strip menu item the the menu item is going to hold the caption for the plugin the text to be displayed and an exception so if there's any problems loading the plugin we're going to assign an exception to this global exception object so that we can assess it outside of the um, outside of this class or this file here and then you've got the plugin name and that's the save file name of the plugin assembly file name just so that if we need to display an error we can use this plugin name so I'm going to show you that right now I'm going to open up this node here and just add a, a letter into this namespace so that it doesn't load properly and here's the message box could not load plugin image editor plugin template DLL so basically that's what we need the um, the save file name for and that's pretty much it Okay, so this is the constructor of the plugin, and it's fairly simple. So the constructor accepts a picture box. We need the entire picture box because we want to actually um, be able to access its image for one thing and do work on its image, and then we need to invalidate the picture box when we're done painting to it because we want the, um, we want the changes to reflect immediately. And then, so I'm just uh, assigning to menu item since it's an auto implementing get set accessor. Menu item is going to be null. And um, down here, we are getting the plugin name, so save file name of the assembly name. And then we're getting the assembly as an assembly object itself, uh, just loading it from file. So the file name passed into the plugin object. And then we're getting the type image editor plugin. So this type is a static uh, type here, and the namespace is image editor, and the class must be plugin. And then I'm creating args here because uh, the plugin allows us to pass in a picture box. So we need to create this arg array so that when we get the um, Sorry, that's um, it's not even close to where it's being used. Okay, that's better. So let's start 
with the uh, the menu item text this time. So basically, I'm getting a property. The property name is caption in the plugin, and we're getting its value. You can pass in null because it's a static class. There's no target object, and then convert it to string, and that will get the caption. And there, I have a property to get the image in the plugins. So the property name is bitmap. We're going to get the value. Um, pass in null. Convert it to or cast it to an image. Then I'm using lambda expression here to create a click event handler for our um, tool strip menu item because that's part of our plugin object in the uh, plugin manager is this tool strip menu item. So of course the entry method which is the actual functionality of the plugin that accepts a picture box so that's one of its arguments its only argument so that's what we're going to pass into this method info when we invoke the method in the method info object and uh, I didn't really break this down but basically I'm calling the entry method the static entry method of the static type class plugin and we're getting we're just passing in the picture box and let it do it do its work in there okay so here if anything wrong happens then assign that exception to a global exception object and then I've got this loaded property down here basically says that exception is if exception is equal to null then the plugin has been successfully loaded otherwise it hasn't okay so back to the plugin manager basically the plugin manager accepts the picture box uh, control and first we're gonna see if the plugin directory exists. If it does, then we're going to iterate through all of the DLLs in the plugin directory. And after that, we're just going to create plugins by passing in the file name of the plugin and the picture box so that we can pass the picture box into that one method. And I'm pushing it into a stack of plugins. I typically use stacks when I don't require, I don't need to iterate, I don't need to index the array of whatever and plus you get a slight performance increase over lists okay and just a global property to expose the plugins to my main form so let's go to the main form and go to the present plugins method so here I'm instantiating the plugin manager called it pman passed in the picture box and then I'm getting those plugins using the plugins property. And then I'm iterating through the plugins and checking to see if the exception is equal to null. If it is, then we're going to add it to our tool strip menu item so that we can click on it and raise the or call the appropriate functionality. Um, otherwise, we're just going to display this message box here. So I'm not actually using the loaded property, but you can if you want to. If it's uh, if it's simpler, okay. So let's take a look at the plugin that's actually loaded. The crossout plugin. I'm going to get rid of the uh, image editor plugin template. So we're going to open up the crossout plugin project here. So right in the settings, I have post build event here that copies the plugin DLL to the uh, image editor plugins directory so that it reflects right away in the um, image editor. So let's go to the plugin class. Remember that the requirements are that the namespace is called image editor, the class is called plugin, it has a um, property called caption and that's just the display text and the tooltip item or tool strip item. And then it has a property, it needs a property called bitmap that actually gets the bitmap to be displayed in the item as well. And then it needs an entry method. You can pan this out into any other methods, but this method needs to be called entry and it needs to be available and, and it needs to accept a picture box. These are all static things, so. I put a note at the top here, be careful not to put too many global vars in this class or you'll blow up the app. You won't blow it up, you'll blow up, you'll bloat up the app. Okay, so let's make some changes 
Actually, let's first use the cross out plugin. Sorry, wrong, pro one, wrong project. Uh, I'm going to build the image editor project, run it, load an image, pictures, select bitmap, select this bitmap here, and cross it out. So there it is. I've crossed it out. That's what the original, that's how it looks by default. Now let's change something in the cross out plugin. So I'm going to go to the plugin project and we're going to change the thickness to 10 of this pen here. And you might even want to make it dashed. So we can change the dash dial to dash. Build it. Once I build it, it gets copied over to the image editor plugins. So back in the image editor, we run it and load a picture. And it looks like I changed the graphics for the display image and not the actual functionality that modifies the image in the picture box. But oh well, you get the point. Um, that's how it works. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do to depict how easy it is to create plugins using this plugin system, I'm actually going to create a plugin from the template that I created. So I decided to create a template for the plugin so that nobody needs to do guesswork when creating plugins for this small application. And this is pretty much a demonstration. I'm not actually like serious with this plugin system. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to go find the template somewhere. I do believe it's zipped in here. So there's the template, just going to put it out here. And we're going to rename it to image editor border plugin. And I might have some directory problems when trying to uh, do this. So I'm going to close this cross out plugin project first. And we're going to load up this here. And it's just going to be the project. Yeah, in that way, I don't have any directory problems. If I had the solution there and you try to open up with the solution, you're probably going to have problems with directories and stuff. Um, okay, so here's the template. I'm going to rename the template to image editor border plugin because that's what it's going to be. We're going to apply a border to the uh, image in the image editor. So first let's set the image caption. We're going to call it 3D border. And it's bitmap. We're going to, I don't know, I'm going to check to see if we have a bitmap available somewhere, uh, an icon available somewhere on my computer. So we're going to create resources. Apparently I can't add image, oh, I have to go add existing file, go into my pictures, look for an icon, so Windows icon, icon, and we're just going to use any old icon. This paintbrush will do. So in this case I'm not programmatically drawing the icon for the tool strip item, we're actually going to use resources. So I'm going to get rid of this, return resources colorize and the problem with that is it's actually an icon and I need it to be a bitmap so two bitmap probably should have just found a bitmap and loaded that but this will do typically you want a 16 by 16 uh, bitmap because that's how it's going to be displayed in this case. So here is our entry method. This is where the functionality is going to be. So in, in the template I have invalidate down here because you're most likely want to you want the changes to appear right away. And then here's where you can just draw stuff onto the image. So let's draw a 3D border onto this image here. So 3D 
I'm going to use Control Paint and Draw Border 3D. I think that will do. We're going to pass in our graphics object and the um, rectangle of the image. So I'm not sure how this behaves, so I'm going to do its one, one, what? And the width. So pick box image dot width, take away two, and we're going to do the same thing with the height. And we're going to specify the border style. We're going to do raised inner. Looks that'll that should do it. Okay, so if we go over to the image editor and uh, open up its debug directory, go into plugins, you'll notice that the image editor uh, it's it's copying itself over as the assembly name image editor plugin template. We don't want that. So you'd have to go into the assembly information. That's not actually where it is. Sorry, I'm in the wrong project. Let's go to the um, the plugin template. Change it up so that it's no longer a template. So the assembly name, image editor, I'm just going to call it... Um, What's it? What was it? it? It applies a border, so we're going to call it 3D border. And you might want to change the default namespace and uh, stuff in the assembly information. And you can use the description of the assembly to display information about the plugin in the actual program. if it's not too complex to get the description of the assembly. So let's go, let's build this. We're going to build the plugin again. Go back to plugins. Now we've got our 3D border plugin built. That's what we wanted. I'm going to get rid of the image editor plugin template. Okay, go back to the image editor and let's see how the plugin works. So I'm going to load an image. Go up to plugins. And there's the 3D border plugin. We've got our icon loaded up from a resource in the assembly. I'm going to click on that and it applies a border around the image. Now we can save it. There it is. I'm going to upload the image editor solution to my web page on the samples page and I'm going to comment some of the stuff a bit more. I'm going to keep the template in a zip in the solution and maybe have a readme file if it's necessary. Um, basically you can use this for whatever whatever you want. It's very easy to integrate this plugin system. And uh, that's it. See you later.